Welcome fellow armchair generals. This is Gamer1745 here with a new game that was given to me uh, for Christmas and thank you very much for that. And it's Gary Grigsby's War in the East. Of course many of us have talked about this a little bit and me playing it for some time. Um, and I have wanted to very much so. And um, so now I can bring you this game. It um, is really fun. I pre I've been playtesting it or learning it or whatever you want to call that um, for a little while now. Um, one of the Twitch streams, good reason to show up on the Twitch streams, um, played a little bit, it showed it off some, but this is going to be the first episode. Now, sort of tell you the plans. Um, there is a... Um, big super campaign you know the war in the east we're not gonna start with that um, whether it's I'm not that good or um, more to learn because I have not completed even one of these sort of scenarios so we're gonna start with a couple of two or three scenarios and do those first um, partially just for me to learn partially um, to see how you guys like the um, the game so we're gonna start with that so here we are now I have watched a couple other youtubers play this and um, played like I say some of it but not fully completed uh, a session so I will try to play and explain what um, and why I'm doing it and um, if any of you who do play it um, please post questions or maybe I should say comments and suggestions um, below because um, I know I have a lot to learn and even little tips could be helpful but as we all know the opening phases of Barbarossa and this is the road to Minsk um, scenario we have to um, take Minsk and it um, appears to be um, super easy to take Minsk so this is partially a confidence building scenario and partially a training scenario and the real challenge is how quickly we can do it and which as it should be but so the opening moves for um, Barbarossa one of the main elements was um, hitting the Soviet Air Force so we should start with that so we have this is the main movement mat, um, selection this is railways, these are to do naval transports, amphibious, um, air recon mode. Now I'm playing this currently, and I will want your feedback before we play the big um, campaign, whether we should play it in, you know, board war game style, you know, like a, you know, not boring, but, you know, out on a board where we see all the chips, or whether we should play it um, with uh, Fog of War on. So that would be a... Um, option and I will want feedback on that though the first couple of scenarios we're going to be playing it in this mode um, uh, we can bomb units we can um, bomb airfields we can bomb cities I think that's more important for the longer campaigns and scenarios we can do air transport um, air transfer mode I believe those are the transfer fighters and um, show the battle type things and that's the end of the turn Okay, so we're going to open up with um, taking out some Soviet air. So let's, we can um, hover over this and see what um, we can see. They have some anti-aircraft guns, some troops, but the main thing there are various types of fighters and bombers. Uh, and we can see there, there, it's the, um, what, reddish, pinkish, reddish brown hexes are where, there are air base units the counters and what is um, uh, highlighted I guess um, is the range in which we can operate in these are too far away from us and this is a very sophisticated uh, setup of how this all works so we will um, bomb this airfield and it was bombed we can oh well we didn't that didn't last too long I should pause it and 
right, so on this airfield, and we'll hit pause so we can talk about it. We can see what attacked them and what defended. We can see our losses were zero, their losses were 113 fighters, and 121 bombers um, in that battle with the forces that were engaged in, in striking the battle. So, um, and of course we can hover over to see that these guys are basically shattered. Now this still has fairly decent. I'm right clicking on them to again pretty good. Now um, it's using air units um, calculated out from Luft Float 2 here. Um, how many, how far the air ba their air bases are away? How distance flying time is being calculated, and how many um, you know missions you can fly in a turn? All that type of stuff is all being calculated, which is really cool. Although this again sort of looks like your old school counters war game which I grew up with um, it's much more sophisticated and that is great now up here yes yeah, so let's see if we can bomb this now and so again here no losses took out some fighters so and we can see the details now okay so what we need to do is, is we need to go over to here we want to take Minsk there are some other victory points uh, will highlight it but we're not going to worry so much about that we're going to smash this army and take Minsk so we have here now we, we're going to bring up some of our reserves I think now um, when you click on a stack it selects both of these and then you can um, click on that which unselects that so that will the infantry division can see that the attack and defense values look pretty good. We're hitting them with surprise overall. And this shows how many uh, movement points you will have left at that point. Or uh, action points, I should say, because um, to attack is an action as well. And um, you can see they routed, went back to there retreated so we are moving up and what we're going to try to do here is um, this would be better you have a stacking limit of three that's why you're having to walk around this and we're going to start with this they retreated So, um, I'm going to now you can, um, well, we can't here, but you can attack like this or shift and do a prepared attack. This is like a hasty. Attack. And we're just going to hit these guys in the rear. So, yeah, we didn't do so good. We didn't have enough movement points, but it's cleared out. It's disrupted them a bit. So now we can bring up these guys here. And we will want to bring them all up. Because we've got to fight our way across fairly wide river um, abilities and I'm going to do a prepared attack and that got them routed and pushed back so we won that good but not at some super great odds because of the terrain uh, oh I want to damn that's loud out there um, that wasn't exactly yeah Oh, well, I don't think it's going to matter that much. Sort of wanted to not leave them all stacked up as three. Um, uh, clear and undo. I don't know. Um, I, 
honestly don't know. And sometimes it can be conditional. You know, we didn't bump into anything on. Uh, I guess not. I, I would have preferred not to have them all overstacked. There. Okay, well. Oh, also, here we go. You can see this. Um, well, actually, this core here commands this unit and these. Go over here, you can see they're all color coded as purple. Highlighted, these are all been used up. Um, here, and we will want to be. Um, Wanting to keep cores commands in supply, I do believe, and um, now they were routed. Now they were hit earlier by this other unit, so they were already disrupted. We'll leave him right where he is for the moment. Now, so you can see this is limiting our movement here because we have the headquarters. So we're going to click on that and unselect the headquarters unit um, contemplating trying to attack here now let's come here. Now moving up. that headquarters and we're going to move forward to that. You can see the area that we control versus what they control currently. Now we've got this tank unit here. Um, we got to the 7th Panzer Division, Rommel's old division, he wasn't a commander though at this point, and the 20th um, Panzer Division, all part of this um, What's that? The 34th core looks like, if I read my Roman numerals correctly. So, um, and see, what I'm wanting to try to do is, is we're pinching, or pinching around and creating a um, pocket here. So that's what I want to try to do. Um, I want to get by that, and that isn't going to be hard. I'm just trying to do it in the most efficient way. Um, well, let's start out with attack here. One now that routed them effectively. Come forward, and we're going to unselect one of these because we don't need to use up uh, command points from both. And they surrender because they can't move there, the fortified units, if I'm understanding everything correctly. Yeah, we have enough points to do that as a prepared attack. Making sure that we crush it. Now you can only attack, at least as far as I can tell, from one province at a time. So if I were to move him here and then move another one up there, I can't do the sort of good uh, hearts of iron thing and attack from two sides. At least I have yet to see how to be able to do so. Um, so that is a bit of a limitation. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think here because do I move them up and him up to there to push through? Or do we Gotta get rid of that guy first. Um, let's come down here. We'll clear this out. And different, you can see different movement um, terrains cost different amounts, of course. We're gonna move 
them up here. And I'm gonna leave these guys on top. Blocking both of these. And this is what they are. And I'm gonna use the going to use them. The more prepared routed overkill good. about more movement. Um, just, I just want to make sure I'm controlling all of the railways. Right where they are. Take a time to get to know that river effectively. Okay, now we just hit them hard enough so they retreated. That's good. There we go. So now we've sort of cleared out um, a fair amount of units here. So we're going to bring up our motorized unit here to exploit. As you get close, you can see we capture some fuel, push them back, they retreat back. You can come down here or attack there. Now we have these two Panzer divisions again. So now we've cleared out of the way for them. We can get all the way down to there if we want um, or even moving these guys forward do we want to try to hit there well we probably don't need both so let's start with the 20th Maybe the weaker one Capturing those things, cutting off. They retreated. They're all just disappearing and shifting in new locations like the air base. Got two movement points. But, uh. Okay, routed, retreated. We pushed them back. So we've done. So we're now at the edge of Minsk here, or virtually so. Now here, what we're going to do is come like this. Hit them, route them. But we have a bit stronger unit, so here we are going to go with a prepared anti tank artillery brigade, retreated. These guys, let's take them out. And push back to motorized division. Now remember, Soviet motorized divisions were really sort of motorized brigades. That's just going to be generally true in a lot of elements with the Soviets. Now here, these are these are interesting units. These are um, what FBD three. Um, not exactly forward. Uh, I don't know, from Army Group 7. These are sort of like the organization tote units. So you come up here, move them up to there, and then notice, um, well, let's unselect this. Um, you can see this becomes um, highlightable. And then you hit that. It will repair the railway hex so that we can come up and we can now spend a movement point 
or whatever, or two, depending on one here currently. And repair the railways. And they won't be repaired until next turn. But we are going to do what we can to get them repaired now. That's sort of the reason why I didn't want to, to could move back. I think we could have moved there if I didn't overstack. But so we got that, those railways to be um, repaired in the near future. And so now we are going to see if we can break out and through and around this. But we can't attack with the HQ, so. And. Well, actually, let's attack here. Now, um, these little um, counter markers, I guess, are very meaningful. This two X's is the division. Um, three X is a brigade, or three I's are a brigade. Uh, and these units here can be recombined to um, actually make a division. So they're weaker. Or you can split this one, one of these things, and do it. I'm, we're not, I'm not going to be doing that now. But so that, that's why this is so, these are so much weaker, because these are brigades and this is a division. Fully. So you can put them back together or split them up. But what we're going to do here is, and again, since you can't attack from more than one province at once, we're going to do a prepared attack there. And we hit them hard enough to push them back. So I knew that they were attacking us long from previous experience. That just doesn't work well. Now that frees these guys up from moving without movement penalties. We're going to hit that, get across that river. Hopefully, yeah, maybe not quite overkill, but. Down in the flank. And if we have it, yes. There we go. So now we've pushed this open. And we're going to come right down into here. We're going to start with the armor division. The only reason the HQ just didn't immediately evaporate is because it was stacked with a fighting unit. Okay, so we got that. Um, so here we have the full division. It's going to come here with these guys in the flank. Push them back, push them off of the river and swamps. So um, I'm not going to move any of these headquarters forward at this point because, again, I'm worried about moving them into areas of low supply. I'm not sure how much supply does affect the HQs. Let's Moving on better terrain there. Get the armor unit first. Route. 
about it for sure. And then this looks like well dug in. Seen it and had we not. I don't have enough action points. Way dug in still, so um, this, the the second um, number is their um, the defensive value. Got these guys, they can move quite a bit far. Do we come down and hit down here, I think? Or do we move up and support that flanking element? That would probably be better. Yeah. Should have done it prepared. Salt takes up more action points, but wouldn't have had to attack twice. Ultimately taking less. Yeah, now we still got these, but we got enough forces here to deal with them. I don't think we can get there, though, I don't think. Yeah. And attack. Now we'll come down here. And start hitting from the other flank. Let's see with these guys. We're going to make a weak unit. So I, I, to me, this is one of the counterintuitive things. I would normally um, want to click on the one to select, but if you click again, you got to remember to deselect the unit. Oh, that should have gone in for a prepared attack. Yep, so attack now I want to select both of you. Again, should have. harder. Now the stack they can't do anything but this guy can so we'll deselect and continue to push them back out of the way. Now here we have again a sort of a river situation so Twenty-one defending. So we got the fourth Panzer Division and the third Panzer Division. Okay. Got down here we have Das Reich Motor Motorized Division. These are all pretty well done. The one thing that they lack, the Hearts of Iron. I know most of you are Hearts of Iron viewers or players, I should say, um, is actual um, division commanders. But you can see that these are pretty well. They got forty-two of um, details. So you can look here. Um, see just what they have in their machine guns, mortars, um, some Stug B or three Bs, um, 75 millimeter. Those are the really light little infantry guns, the L24s. Um, so you can see just what they are equipped with, and so this is a very sophisticated um, war game. Now what we might be able to do is that Let's see if we can do that. Okay, there we go. I want 
guys. Retreating. So they're basically stuck there. This is their headquarters. That's the um, army headquarters for the um, corps. Now, um, well, you know, for this, do this. Do those, but you can do this. Wow, that they just scattered and went away. Oh, did I? Did I just learn how to do something here? No. Jeez. Oh, I think I did. Oh, okay. Yay! Gamer, you've learned something, if I'm not mistaken. So, hold down shift key to select other units. So now I have these, and I can't attack. I can click that, which I then... Oh, can I? Um, hmm. Okay, but then if we... Nope, still can't attack. I can move them, I guess, or something. I can't attack. Um, nope. Well, no, maybe I can. So if I shift, hold down, I can do a prepared attack, it looks like. Okay. That's why, that's why that was such overkill. Well, okay, so you can do attacks, but they need to be prepared, I guess. So let's experiment with this. Let's move just you forward to here. And let's come over here and move you forward. Well, um, let's just attack here and kill that. Yeah, because I don't want to burn up. So you come. Click there, and then there, and then I can see that I can't attack r regular. I'm just, I'm not doing anything. Then I hold down the shift here. Okay, this is if you wanted to, to toggle it with the mouse button, but hold down the shift, and then I can do a prepared attack from more than one province. So, um, there we go. Wow, okay, great. I learned something new. See why we're still not going in for the big massive all-in-one campaign yet? Because I still got a lot to learn. Got a lot to learn. So, and it's time to end this episode. So, hey, um, please post questions, comments, suggestions, ideas, um, tips, other handy things you may know. Because um, I do have, like I say, a lot to learn. And of course, thanks just for watching. Thanks for liking the videos. I do appreciate that. And if you haven't already and want to see more, hopefully good wargaming action with historical commentary, please subscribe to this channel. See you next time for more War in the East.